Hey folks, I want to invite you to join us on Sunday for our family groups in the morning and worship celebration in the morning, also Sunday evening for our activities. And just want to take a, a few moments to share with you today what I'm going to be covering in our message on Sunday morning as we continue through the book of Hebrews. And so before I do that, just briefly what's happening on Sunday. It's kind of a typical day uh, in the life of our church as far as our gatherings on Sunday with one exception on Sunday evening, which I'll get to in a moment. But at 930 on Sunday morning, we've got family groups and those are for all ages. And so we want to encourage you to join us. We've got five groups for adults and then we've got groups for all ages of kids and youth. And so that's from 930 to 1030 on Sunday morning. And then at 1040 is our worship celebration. And we'll worship the Lord through song and through prayer, through giving and through looking at God's word together and also through communion as we commune together, taking the Lord's Supper uh, at the end of the service. And then on Sunday afternoon at five o'clock, those who are on the finance team and trustees, they'll gather for their monthly meetings at 5 p.m. on Sunday. And then at six o'clock, we've got our prayer, praise and members meeting. We have this every other month. And so this is an important time, especially if you're a church member watching. I want to encourage you to make sure you join us, not just Sunday morning for family groups and worship, but then again, Sunday evening at six o'clock for our prayer, praise and members meeting, uh, the, our church family business meeting as we talk about the ministries in the church, get financial updates and just uh, together make decisions that impact uh, what we're going to do moving forward as as a body of believers. And so that's Sunday evening from six to seven. But just briefly the, today, I wanted to share with you what we're gonna be talking about as we look at, at Hebrews chapter nine on Sunday morning in our worship celebration. We're continuing this series, The Journey of Faith, as we've been going through Hebrews. And we're gonna do this a couple more weeks before we get into the Advent season, the Christmas season at the end of November. Uh, and we have a four week series of uh, covering Advent, covering the, the coming of our Lord and Messiah, Jesus Christ. And so before we do that, we're going to, we have a few more weeks in Hebrews. And in this Sunday, as we look at Hebrews 9, we're going to talk about Jesus is the better substitute. And in and, and using one of the great old hymns and my, kind of my purpose, my hope for the message is that your hope will be built on nothing less uh, and really nothing more uh, than in Jesus's blood and righteousness. And so we're going to talk about that and how Hebrews 9 really helps us to see that we need to place our hope in, in the ultimate, the superior, the perfect, the only substitute for our sins. It, it says in, in Hebrews 9, towards the end of the chapter, um, after explaining that, that, you know, every other substitute is temporary, that, that there's nothing really that can take away our sins, that any attempt at it uh, is, is limited. And then it goes on to say, but, but now Jesus has appeared one time at the end of the ages for the removal of sin by the sacrifice of himself. And so he gave himself, whereas others who would try to make atonement for sin would have to sacrifice something else. Jesus sacrificed himself. And it says in verse 27, and just as it is appointed for people to die once and after this judgment, and so that's for all of us, so also the Messiah, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. And so we, we see a beautiful picture of the gospel here that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and he rose from the dead. He's seated at the right hand of God in heaven and he's coming again to judge the living and the dead. And we need to be prepared for that by turning from our sins and trusting in his sacrifice, his substitution for us when he took our place on the cross. And so we're gonna look at that on Sunday morning and really kind of consider three reasons that, that Jesus alone provides the superior substitutionary sacrifice for our sins. And that's something we all need. We need to be forgiven, to be in a right relationship with God. And that forgiveness only comes in and through Jesus Christ. And so again, I hope you'll join us on Sunday morning at 9.30 for family groups, 10.40 for worship. And then again, Sunday evening for our prayer praise and members meeting at six o'clock. Spread the word and be, be in prayer as we lead up to Sunday, just that uh, God would help you to, to have a heart that's prepared for uh, worshiping the Lord together and learning from his word and then applying his word rightly to your life. Have a great day. God bless you. Enjoy this beautiful weather.